China has a lot of tanks. Almost 9,000 of them. China's top-of-the-line tank, the Type 99, has commanded healthy respect from international observers, even though it has never been exported, nor used in combat. The reason is simple, the reported performance parameters are equal to many top Western designs, and the Type 99 also packs a few unique tricks of its own. We will look at how the Type 99 stacks up to two important contemporaries, the American M1A2A bombs and the Russian T-98 tank. Most importantly, Russia is selling its weapons to India and Vietnam, including systems which are quite clearly earmarked to oppose the Chinese military, such as the BrahMos cruise missile, and, well over 1,000 T-90 tanks, many of which are deployed along its Himalayan border. China fought a war with India in 1962 over that border, and another with Vietnam in 1979 to punish the nation for opposing the Beijing-backed Khmer Rouge regime in Cambodia. Vietnam would like to order T-90s as well. Today, the Chinese military persists in seeing India, a potential future superpower, as a threat and has extensively militarized their shared border and built roads allowing heavy military vehicles to pass through the steep mountains. China is also allied with Pakistan, which has repeatedly warred with India, and occasionally transfers military technology to it. The Abrams, of course, is the classic American design which devastated Soviet-made Iraqi armor in the 1991 Gulf War without losing a single tank to enemy fire. The Abrams isn't exactly new, but the Army has continuously tweaked the ammunition, armor package, and sensors to keep it up to date. The T-90 is Russia's first post-Cold War tank. Though not quite a peer of the Abrams, it still boasts significant improvements in accuracy and protection, particularly in models equipped with later-generation explosive reactive armor. While Russia is introducing its revolutionary new T-14 tank, for now its 550 T-90 has remained its frontline armored vehicle. Moscow has developed the more advanced T-90 AM but did not place it into full production. However, 354 of the similar T-90 MS export variant have been sold to India for deployment on its border with China. In total, India has over 1,200 T-90s, while Algeria eventually intends to operate over 800. China's Type 99 combines a hull that closely resembles an elongated T-72 with a Western-style turret inspired in part by the German Leopard 2, first appearing as the Type 98 prototype tank in a National Day Parade in 1999. The vehicle was redesignated the Type 99 and entered service in 2001. At 57 tons, it comes in between the 70-ton Abrams and the 48-ton T-90 in terms of weight. Several upgrades, including the new Type 99A2 variant, boast advanced new technologies. Beijing fields nearly 500 Type 99s in 16 armored battalions, and has produced 124 of the newer 99s so far. The type is not offered for export, though some of its technology is used in China's VT-4 export tank. and the T-90 rely on a 125mm cannons using carousel autoloaders descended from Soviet-era designs. This weapon proved underpowered versus Abrams and Challenger tanks in the Gulf War, but new improved tungsten ammunition leaves it capable of piercing the frontal armor of an Abrams at shorter combat ranges. The new Type 99A2 comes with a longer barrel main gun, which in theory should impart higher muzzle velocity to sabot shells and improve their armor penetration and accuracy. It also boasts fancy new stabilizer technology. Reportedly, China intends to eventually install a larger 140mm gun on the Type 99, but early tests have cracked up the weapon. This, incidentally, mirrors Russia's plans to upgun its new T-14 armature tank to a similar caliber weapon. 
the Abrams Rumetal 120mm gun, equipped with politically controversial M829 depleted uranium rounds, can penetrate around 15 to 25 percent more armor. The U.S. now produces new generations of M829 rounds capable of piercing the advanced contact and relictory active armor systems developed by Russia. China has developed its own depleted uranium ammunition for its 125mm gun, which it claims can penetrate the M1 up to ranges of 1.4 km. The Abrams uses a fourth crew member to load the gun, which American tankers argue is more reliable, offers a higher rate of fire, and gives the tank a spare hand if one of the other crew members is incapacitated. However, the space needed to accommodate a fourth crew member makes the M1 larger and heavier. The Type 99 and T90 both can fire anti-tank missiles from the gun tube, while the Abrams cannot. The Type 99 uses AT-11 reflux missiles licensed from Russia. This could theoretically be useful for combat at very long ranges, or against low-flying helicopters. However, tank-launched missiles have existed for 50 years without seeing much use. Effective sensors for spotting and aiming are arguably as decisive in tank engagements as firepower. Russia has made some strides in tank sights and thermal images in recent years, though the general sentiment is that Western sights and sensors remain superior. The T-90A does not carry Russia's best hardware, some have been upgraded with French Catherine thermal sights, while the T-90MS has an improved Kalina targeting system. China is known for its excellent electronics, and the Type 99A2 supposedly carries a new infrared tracking system that enables it hunt enemy tanks efficiently and is believed to be superior to the systems on the T-90A. Type 99 benefits both from composite armor, and explosive reactive armor ERA, bricks of explosives onto the tank that prematurely detonate incoming shells. The new Type 99A2 variant uses a multi-layered system thought to be similar to the relict era developed by Russia, which uses a radar to detonate the era before hostile shells impact. It is intended to defeat tandem charge missiles capable of overcoming older generation era. The T-90A uses the older Contact 5 era, while the new T-90MS tanks serving in India sport the relict system. Though most effective against anti-tank missiles, both systems also diminish the penetrating power of tank shells. The Type 99 also comes with a laser warning receiver which warns the tank commander if his vehicle is being painted with hostile targeting lasers, affording the driver a chance to back away out of danger. Given all the videos from Syria and Yemen of tanks sitting obliviously as anti-tank missiles meander towards them, often taking 20 seconds or more to impact, this could significantly improve survivability. The Type 99 also is believed to come with its own unique high-powered Dazzler laser designed to jam laser and infrared guided missiles, damage enemy sites, and blind the eyes of hostile gunners, possibly with a permanent effect. Fortunately, high-power tank-mounted Dazzlers have never been used in combat before. The new A2 is also thought to have a laser-based communication system which can be used to identify friendly vehicles and transmit encrypted data. The T-90 tank, on the other hand, relies on the Shtora Soft Kill Active Protection System, which not only jams lasers with its own emitters, but also deploys aerosol grenades to create a laser-obscuring cloud around the vehicle. The M1 Abrams lacks its own laser warning receiver, active protection systems or explosive reactive armor, though it is conceivable future upgrades will incorporate some of these features. For now, the M1A2 relies on its excellent Choban composite armor, which has been tweaked over the years and believed to be equivalent to 800 mm or more of rolled hardened armor RHA, versus tank sabot shells, or 1300 mm versus the shaped charges used in rockets and missiles. For comparison, the T-90 is believed to have a maximum armor of around 650 RHA. 
The Abrams also benefit from having separately stowed ammunition, making it less likely to catastrophically detonate when hit by enemy fire. The Type 99's combination of composite and modular space armor is believed to offer armor protection close or equivalent to the Abrams. One sources claims it offers protection equivalent to around 1100 RHA, though the actual effectiveness is classified. The Type 99 is by far the most nimble of the bunch, able to sprint up to 50 miles per hour on roads. The M1 Abrams and the T90MS used by India follow behind at 42 and 45 miles per hour respectively, while the T98 trails at 35. However, the gas-guzzling turbine-powered M1A2 can only travel 240 miles before acquiring refueling, while both the Type 99 and T90 have ranges over 300 miles. Furthermore, the M1's greater weight makes it the hardest to transport and deploy. So all in all, while the Abrams arguably retains the best firepower of the three, the Type 99 seems likely to be better protected thanks to its multi-layered defensive systems. And it's faster and has longer range. The T90A is generally outclassed by the other two, but the T90MS, with its relict armor, improved sights and more powerful engines, can hold its own. However, one should keep in mind the actual performance of the Type 99's armor, gun and electronic systems are not certain, particularly as the vehicle has not been exported, whereas both the M1 and T90 have been used in action by multiple operators. Beijing likes to keep the details of its technology close, and also has an incentive to talk up the capabilities of its hardware.